It's Platt, and today we get local. That's next from Platt's Beer of the Week. So the uh, particular beer we have today is the Downtown Doppelbach comes to us from Beer District Brewing. Beer District Brewing is probably the newest uh, brewery in Las Vegas. I can't think of any others that's opened since, especially, again, during this pandemic. I know there was a couple other being planned, but I don't think, <laughs> I think those plans, unfortunately, fell through. Uh, Beer District Brewing is actually located in the Arts District of Las Vegas. That is uh, between downtown and the north end of the Strip, the Stratosphere, the Space Needle looking building. The Arts District somewhere in between. It's, every big city has one of these areas. It was kind of a downtrodden industrial area that cities every once in a while say, well, we need to clean up and so let's put some cafes there and some little boutique shops and we'll let the hipster millennials run all over the place. Uh, every metropolitan area has these. Um, so Vegas, you know, had to get, get in on her too. Reminds me a little bit of Deep Elm in Dallas. If you've ever been there, of course, I think Deep Elm's not even what it was 20 years ago when I used to go down there. Um, unfortunately for the folks at Beer District, they opened in February 2020, literally weeks before the whole pandemic hit. I remember driving by the brewery last May, June, something like that. I remember... And they had a sign where you could pick up beer to go, but you couldn't come in and this, that, and the other. I remember thinking, all oh, those poor guys, the work it takes to open a brewery. And then the world blows up on you. And worst of all, you're in a state that has some of their stricter uh, regulation or, you know, stricter pandemic rules and stuff like that. So I felt so bad for those guys. But it appears they've... Made it through that they're opening. Uh, I know the tap room's now open. They have some, you know, uh, they do some events and stuff like that. Um, I think Thursday night's their big night trivia night with DJ Trivia. Now, oddly enough, a lot of you out there say, well, Vegas, why do you guys do trivia night? That's You do that in Kansas or Milwaukee. Or oddly enough, that stuff really works well in the local bars out here. Uh, several of the bars do a trivia night, and they get big crowds. Uh, I know people will think, well, it's Vegas. You guys are all in a nightclub, a day club. You're all on the strip. You, you guys don't party like we do in the burbs. Oh, nay, nay. Where do you think we all came from out here? We all came from Kansas and Milwaukee and this, that, and the other. So a lot of that stuff still works here. So it uh, sounds like trivia night uh, works for the beer district. I don't think, in my research, they don't have a kitchen, but I believe they bring in a rotating uh, crew of different food trucks, including one, one of my favorite names I've ever seen for a food truck, Eat My Wieners. Yes, that's the name of the food truck, which I think is great. Uh, one of the things I like about Beer District is their lineup of beers. I think they've got a real solid lineup of beers, and I quickly want to talk about them. Uh, first is Captain Haney's, a hazy IPA made with wheat and oats. So I talked about, even though I kind of rant on the IPA thing, it's not against the style itself or that you shouldn't have one. You just don't need 12 hazy IPAs. They have one. Uh, next is Blonde Lager. Lager spelled L-O-G-G-E-R-S, 5.2% alcohol by volume, an American lager, basically regular guy beer, which again is something I've talked about uh, in these beer videos too. I, I just, I think it's a great idea. Let's get everybody in the door. Let's get them drinking craft beer, even though stylistically it may be closer to big beer. Let's get them in the door and then, you know, maybe we get a doppelbock in a little bit later. Uh, they have a beer called Vegas in a Bottle, which I kind of like the name. It is a 10% ABV Russian Imperial Stout. Uh, they have something uh, called Scotch 80s Wit Bread. It is a 8% ABV Scotch Ale. Uh, Hugh Hefeweizen, 5.2% ABV. Hefeweizen with uh, hints of clove and banana. And they also do some seasonal and some barrel-aged stuff. Um, they had something, I presume as a Christmas time beer, or winter beer, called Jimmy Claus, an 18% ABV stout, which I definitely would have loved to check out. But I like the mix of beers. You know, you have a couple of German beers, the Doppelbach, the Hefeweizen, you have a Scotch Ale, a Russian Imperial Stout, 
Of course, the West Coast Hazy IPA Regular Egg Guy Beer. Just a nice balance of beer. I think they have 8 to 10 regular beers and, then of course, seasonal stuff like that. I think that's great. Uh, it's a nice balance. A little bit of everything, but again, we're not doing 10 of one style or 10, you know, just a nice balance. I, I really appreciate that. Well, before we try this particular beer, let's check out the stats. Well, since I'm talking about a local brewery today, I thought I would talk Vegas right now. I'll give you another little Vegas update. Every once in a while, some, one of y'all will put in the comments, hey, what's going on in Vegas? So let me give you a little update. As of this taping, early April 2021, Vegas is still currently at 50% occupancy, even though I believe they started letting the hotels, as far as sheer number of rooms, book a little bit more than 50%. But as far as capacity in restaurants, bars, out on the casino floor, blackjack tables, all that stuff, still at 50 percent um word on the street or what the next step is supposedly may 1st they're going to push the COVID restrictions more onto the counties and not the states allow each county i know some of the rural counties out here that never had a real COVID problem and it's just so remote that they, i know they've already said hey we're going to start stop dropping masks we're going to allow 100 percent capacity you know we're going to open back up uh, I'm not sure Clark County, where Las Vegas is, is quite ready for that. Um, just our politicians don't have the stomach for it. But the outlying areas uh, do. Uh, economically, we're still in bad shape out here. One of the worst unemployment rates, this, stuff like that. They're saying 12 to 18 months before we recover. It may be longer because we lost a lot of stuff. The uh, NFL draft. A full season of nights games, which they made the Western Conference Finals last year. No crowd. Our brand new football stadium that we just had to have. Didn't have anybody in the first season. Uh, we just lost a lot, so it may be a while before we recover. Um, casino news. Virgin Casino, a.k.a. the old Hard Rock, recently opened. If you were a fan of the old casino or been there several times, you can walk in there today and still kind of recognize it. Uh, they, there are some changes. Um, they ripped out the big bar in the middle. Uh, man, that place, was, the people watching was unbelievable, especially when they have that uh, the porn awards there. Oh, my God, I killed some quality time at that bar. Uh, they also ripped out a lot of the pool from what I gather. They're going to have, like, outdoor uh, concerts, so less of a pool. That old hard rock pool, oh, holy cow, that was... I don't know some good times. Um, as far as uh, big events go, uh, the first real big event uh, is something called EDC, the Electric Daisy Carnival, one of these big raves where you get 60,000 kids out there, whatever. Uh, supposedly it's a go for late May. Uh, I do know they're having some issues with the county commissioners over certain safety protocols, this, that, and the other. Uh, you know, oddly enough, there was kids dying this thing every year when, when they had it, no one cared, but now, <laughs> now they care, supposedly. Um, but anyway, that's, uh, as far as, uh, events, that's probably gonna be the first one. Um, there's, uh, a couple of big conventions later on the summer coming too. So again, hopefully some business is coming back. Um, back to the casinos. The next mega casino set to open is something called Resort World. It's where the old uh, Stardust was across from the wind. They're shooting for, I think, midsummer. They, I don't think they've announced the opening date yet, but I know they've already started hiring uh, employees. But they uh, made a little news. Supposedly, they are in negotiations with the DJ Tiesto to have them play their mega club that they're going to put in. I'm really kind of surprised by this because even before the pandemic, the club thing had started to run out of steam. Some casinos were starting to close down their nightclubs. I know MGM Resorts kind of went separate ways from the Hakkasan group that ran a lot of their clubs. Um, you know, and the thing with these DJs, the prices were getting insane. Some of these DJs were making four or five, six hundred thousand dollars for one night. That's a lot of money for a club to, to spend before, you know, they open the doors, turn on the lights. They're already half mil in the hole. And you got to sell a lot of vodka Red Bulls and cram a lot of millennials in a tight space to make up that money. 
And I'm not sure nowadays, is, is, you know, uh, I'm surprised to see somebody signing on for that again. But who knows? It may, maybe we do get back to normal. I don't know. Well, so that's a little update about Vegas. Let's drink a beer from Vegas. Oh, that's nice. Pours nice and dark. In the light, I can barely see through, so it's not totally opaque. Let's give her a sniff. Oh, man, plenty of those dark malts on the nose. Oh, man, that's nice. It is um, real chocolatey. Got a lot more. Man, that's nice. That, now, to me, it tastes a little darker a little more of the darker malts a little more chocolate than i get on a on a standard doppelbach maybe it's just my palate today or something but it just it comes off as a little darker um though body wise it's still drinkable it's still similar to like a, a, a just a normal bot style beer you know those are very drinkable dark beers um did this body wise is real nice, um, but again, the aftertaste, you really pick up some of those darker malts. Um, kind, of, kind of, your your mind will think stout for just a split second, but then you realize the body and the, the stout, when you get to the stouts and those dark malts, then you start picking up espresso and, you know, a little, you know, sometimes... Uh, a real dark stout can be kind of dry. Not this. This is still plenty of that malt sweetness. Uh, it's You pick up the chocolate, but you're not getting into the coffee, espresso, leather, you know, notes. Man, just a nice dark lager. Nice dark lager beer. Drinks easy. Has those you know, great notes. A little sweetness. No real hops to notice, but again, it's, it's balanced. It's not too sweet or cloy, cloying sweet or anything like that. Overall, solid beer by the guys from Beer District. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you'd like me to try, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.